with you, beloved, and uh, welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. With the difference, we come together while remaining apart. Strange as it might seem, but it is uh, a necessity still. So I trust that uh, we will be able to enter into uh, this Ash Wednesday service and just know God bless him on us as we begin our Lenten journey. So, and I trust you remember, as I mentioned on Sunday, you remember your, your stone and your cookie pen. We will come to that in a little while. But let us begin our service as we bring our offering of thanksgiving and praise to God as we say, Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. We are together the calling for purity. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, claim the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and will you magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord? Our God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, who turn to Christ in faith, and who themselves are forgiving. So we spend a moment in quiet as we bring ourselves before God God of penitence and confession. As we begin our Lenten journey, we confess together that we are sinners. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect for Ash Wednesday, we offer together. Almighty and Holy God, your Son, in obedience to the Spirit, passed for forty days in the desert. Give us grace to discipline ourselves, that we may press on towards Easter with eager faith and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings for today are read for us by Asher and Ryan. Isaiah 58, reading from verse 1 to 12. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves? and you have not noticed. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast that I have chosen? Only, for, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked to clothe them and to not turn away from your flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, 
and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls and restorer of streets of dwelling. Hear the word of the Lord. Holy, holy.
This is the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to 6, and then from 16 to 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees it in secret will be reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. From verse 16. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal, like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that they show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will also be. This is the Gospel of Christ. I wonder how many of you have had the experience where you come to a traditional normal Ash Wednesday service and had the ashes on your forehead. And then you left after the service and you went into uh, Checkers or ShopRite, or not ShopRite, Emmanuel people shop at Woolies. Um, you've gone in and, uh, and, and people have kind of looked at you, you know, notice people looked at you a little bit funny, a little bit strange. And then some brave soul comes up to you and says, are you aware that there's a black mark on your forehead? Nominal Christians, non-Christians, um, you know, are often not aware of Ash Wednesday. Unlike Christmas and the hype surrounding Christmas and the Christmas trees and all that kind of thing, people are aware that Christmas is approaching. Or Easter, then aware that Easter is approaching because, you know, the shelves are, are laden with the Easter eggs. But not so Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday can come and go, and many people will not even be aware um, that it's, it's Ash Wednesday. And, and this year, Ash Wednesday, during this, uh, during this pandemic, um, you know, it's, it's, it's even more difficult. Um, Ash Wednesday this year offers us challenges, but also opportunities to do things maybe a little bit differently. Challenges because we, we need to worship differently. Opportunities because we need to seek to, to do things differently, yet at the same time make it meaningful and significant at the start of our Lenten journey. So we will not be receiving the ashes on our foreheads. A colleague of mine said to me, he was thinking of getting a long stick that he could dip into the ashes and then just uh, make uh, crosses on people's foreheads. But even though we're not receiving the ashes this year, I want to say that maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing because it is, it is forcing us, it is compelling us to, to think differently about Ash Wednesday and about what we are doing on Ash Wednesday, why we are receiving the ashes on our foreheads. Maybe Ash Wednesday and receiving the ashes on our foreheads has become a bit of a become a habit, become somewhat of a of a ritual, a tradition. 
and the significance and the meaning has been lost. This year, no ashes. So what are we to do on Ash Wednesday? What does Ash Wednesday without ashes look like for you and for me? I want to suggest this year maybe provides us with an opportunity to grapple, to wrestle with the real true meaning of Ash, of Ash Wednesday and why we've been receiving the ashes of our foreheads. So that when next we do receive the ashes of our foreheads, we will do it with a, a greater understanding, a greater appreciation, uh, a greater desire to fulfill our commitment as Christians. What do these ashes represent to you? In a nutshell, in a nutshell, the ashes are meant to be an external sign of an inward reality. Let me repeat that. An external sign of an inward reality. The mark on our head does not make us Christians. The mark on our head is not there to show that we went to church on Ash Wednesday. It is meant to be an external sign of that inward reality. That inward reality that comes as a result of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But the external sign, you see, is not, is not, God doesn't merely want us to have the mark of the cross in ash on our foreheads. There needs to be that, that practical outworking of our faith, which makes a difference in the lives of others. Jesus in, in, in the Matthew's Gospel that was read for us earlier on, gives in a sense, three examples of that outward reality in Matthew chapter 6. He speaks, about, he speaks about giving, he speaks about praying, he speaks about fasting. These are examples. These are examples. These are not the only things that we as Christians do in obedience to God's call in our lives. And they're not only meant to be done only during our Lenten journey. It's all summed up, you see, in that one golden rule that we know so well, but struggle to keep, struggle to hold on to. The golden rule is in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Jesus says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The question is, how do we put into practice this golden rule? How do we, how do we keep it? How do we fulfill this command that Jesus places before us? There's no, there's no point, no, no, no value in getting the outward sign of a cross on our forehead if there has been no, no internal change. But that internal change does not cause us to seek to fulfill the great commandment of God to love Him and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Then why are we surprised when people are not aware that it's Ash Wednesday? Why are we not surprised when people turn their backs on God? This is the challenge before us today as we seek to understand how we can show love to our neighbors. They're not going to see the cross on our foreheads today and tell us there's a black smudge on your head. What will they see on Ash Wednesday this year? What will they see in us this late? What external signs will we be portraying as a result of that inward reality that Christ has saved us, that we are journeying with Him. What external signs will they be demonstrating our love for, for God and our love for our neighbor? Yes, we can pray. Yes, we can pass. Yes, we can give. But Jesus here in Matthew 6 is is in a sense just giving 
giving us a base, the basic ingredients, the, the bare bones, uh, as it were. And it is up to us to know how to put flesh and muscle on these bones, and in so doing, fulfill our commitment to God in thanksgiving for what He has done for us. And it's with this in mind that I, I, I spoke about uh, last Sunday, I spoke about getting a stone and, uh, and a, felt, uh, a fiber tip to cokey, cokey pen. Uh, because we won't be really receiving the ashes on our foreheads this year. But what I want to suggest we do is to take our stone and to take our pen and to mark the stone with a cross as if we are receiving the ashes on our foreheads. And then to take this stone and put it in a permanent place, maybe next to our bed, maybe um, at the place where we have our meals, maybe um, beside our PC where we spend most of our day nowadays, those folks who are working from home, that's where they, where they are. And, and allow the stone, remember this, this cross, can't be washed off like the cross that I call it. And allow for the cross on the stone to remind us of our commitment to God, of our commitment to journey with Him, of our commitment that more than just having an external sign, there is a change within us, and that change is the reality of what God has done in us through Jesus Christ. Maybe you want to take this, uh, the stone with the cross on a Wednesday, and put it in front of you when you do your little Wednesday devotion um, as a reminder that we are not alone. We are separate, we are apart, yet we are together as, as one body. And when we look at the stone, we ask ourselves, when we see the cross on the stone, we ask ourselves, how am I loving God? Especially on this my Lenten journey. How am I showing love to my neighbor? on my Lenten journey, and how will I take it beyond Lent after my Easter celebrations? And then hopefully as a result of, of this, we can, we can arrive at Easter Sunday with, you know, having fulfilled God's commands to us, and, 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 uh, and arrive at Easter with a, with a deeper sense of God's love for us, and with a sense of our commitment to Him, to love him and our neighbor. Maybe you want to take the, the, the little stone cross on Wednesday, put it um, in front of you when you do your little devotion, light a candle, and allow that to be the reminder of God's presence with us that we are not alone. And other Emmanuel family members are doing the same thing that we are doing, and we remain connected as one body. I want to encourage you again. I want to encourage you again to do something. I want you to go away after the service and read again Isaiah chapter 58 verses 1 to 12. The reading that was read for us at the start of the service. Because in this reading, the prophet details some of those very real, very true, uh, outward signs that is expected of us as a result of that inward reality that we have been born again. May God bless us. May God encourage us on our Lenten journey this year. A different journey, definitely, but a journey nonetheless that I know and I believe God can still bless, God can still encourage, and uh, we, can, we, we can make the journey come to Good Friday with a real sense of, of what God did for us in the sufferings of Jesus and come to Easter Sunday with a real sense of joy, celebration and thanksgiving because that little cross on the real stone has been a constant reminder of God's love for you and for me and the call for us to love Him and to love each other. Amen. We lead in prayer now by Mary. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And we thank you just for always being there for us, Lord. We thank you for your unending faithfulness 
and your unending love, Heavenly Father. We just want to praise you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us and for always being there for us and for always guiding us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just bring before you everyone who's been affected by this pandemic, Lord, and we just pray for our friends, our family, and the entire world as we all face this pandemic. We just pray for strength from you, Heavenly Father. And we just pray that you continue to give us strength and that you continue to show us how to love our neighbor. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this Lent period. And we just pray that this experience brings us even closer to you, Heavenly Father. Closer than we are, closer than we've ever been. We pray that, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just want to pray that during this time, we also are mindful of those who do not have. And we just pray that you keep them in your heart, Heavenly Father, as you keep us all in the palm of your hands. We pray that you keep them also in the palm of your hands. We thank you once again, Lord, for this opportunity of another Lenten period, Heavenly Father. And we pray that it brings us closer to you and that we experience you in a way that we have never experienced you before, Lord. We just want to thank you again for your love and your guidance and your protection, Heavenly Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now break bread together on this Ash Wednesday as we begin our Lenten journey. When the resurrected Christ met with his disciples in the upper room, he said it not once but three times. And he says it to us today as well. Peace be with you. And remembering the need for social distancing, no physical contact. We acknowledge each other and we share the peace together as we say, Shalom. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right for us to give God thanks and praise. Lord, we thank you today that there is no lockdown of your love and no quarantine of your grace. Pour out your spirit upon every table where your children break bread today. May the bread which we break and the cup which we drink give hope to all who share it today. Come, gracious Father, and breathe new life into us, your children, and keep us one body in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So let us now, wherever we might be, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We who are many are one body. Let us now, wherever we might be, receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We who are many are one body. Lord, we give you thanks that by this method of worship today we have embodied the very truth that Christ's love is not restricted to buildings nor limited by man-made ceremonies, traditions, or customs. In Christ, you have given us life and set us free to worship and serve you. So come, gracious Father, and breathe your life into us, your children, today. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. At his last supper, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. 
For whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore we proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in this sacrament. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord our God, send the Holy Spirit so that the bread and cup before us today may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your people be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in a time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, glory, are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break reminds us of his body, broken for us. The cup that we drink reminds us of his blood, poured out for us. So take, eat, drink, remember, and believe that the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Feed them in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We pray together, Lord, may the eating of the bread and the drinking from the cup give us courage to live out our faith, not only in our homes and churches, but in your precious world, and especially in the midst of this pandemic. Amen. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. And so we pray too for our country. God bless South Africa. Heal her past and present wounds. Guide her with value based leadership and lead her into the way of truth. Rekindle her level of trust until all shall be equal and all shall flourish for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. So we pray in conclusion. And now may the peace of Christ enfold us, the love of Christ possess us, the spirit of Christ direct us, and the joy of Christ be in us. Amen. Shalom.